Your Excellency, Dame Madame Grassa Marshall, the African Development Bank Board members, African Development Bank senior management and staff of the bank, representatives of diplomatic missions in Cote d'Ivoire, the Southern African Development Community here present, gentlemen and ladies of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is a special privilege to offer these welcome remarks on the 22nd eminent speaker's lecture featuring Her Excellency, Madame Grassa Michel. It is indeed a great honor to have you in our midst, Your Excellency. On behalf of our board and its staff, I welcome you to the African Development Bank. Before providing a very brief overview of the essence of the bank's eminent speaker's lecture series, kindly permit me to give honor to whom honor is due. In your own right, you have been a distinguished champion of African liberation, a voice for the voiceless, an advocate for women, the poor and the marginalized. And for many years, you stood side by side with the greatest African of modern times, your husband, the former president of South Africa, and the global icon, Nelson Mandela, whose 100th birthday, the centenary of his birth, we commemorate in 2018. Your Excellency, Thank you for standing with Africa. Thank you for standing with Madiba. The eminent speakers lecture series is convened by the African Development Institute to share insights and dialogue on development challenges in Africa. Just three weeks ago, we hosted His Royal Highness, Mohamedou Sanusi II, the Emir of Kano, who shared his thoughts with us on the perspective on development in Africa. This 22nd edition of our Eminent Speakers Lecture Series focuses on educating the girl child, empowering women, and enhancing female entrepreneurship in Africa. We can think of no better eminent speaker to share insight on this topic than Your Excellency, Madame Grassa Michel. Her Excellency, Grassa Michel, is an African political leader whose decades-long professional and public life is rooted in Mozambique's struggle for self-rule and international advocacy for women and girls and children's rights. She is a former freedom fighter in Mozambique's Felimo movement and that country's first minister of education. In the years following her tenure in government, Michelle produced a groundbreaking UNICEF report titled The Impact of Armed Conflict on Children that changed the way the United Nations and member states respond in conflict zones. Since then, Her Excellency has worked tirelessly in support of global health, child welfare, and women's rights and empowerment. I have always insisted that no bird flies with one wing. Africa must fly with its two wings, women and men, side by side. However, it is a sad truth that across Africa, women and men often experience different opportunities, conditions, and privileges. They earn different wages, do not have the same access to education, and are not always equal before the law. The African Development Bank's Gender Equality Index measures these differences across three dimensions, economic opportunities, human development, and law and institutions. There is encouraging news, however. Namibia's constitution, for example, guarantees equality before the law and the right to non-discrimination on the basis of sex. It is one of the few countries to use gender-neutral language throughout Rwanda is the first and only country in the world where more than half of parliamentarians are female. And only last month, Ethiopia appointed Sali Wok Zide as the country's first female president. Together with South Africa, these countries are leading the way on our continent. It is not yet Uhuru by any means, but at least progress is being made. Investing in women and girls is one of the most effective ways of promoting development. It has long been recognized that investing in human development of women, and particularly the education of girls, reaps a dual dividend. It improves the quality of life of the women in question, enabling them to be more productive members of society. It also enables them to become champions of human development for their own families and communities. The late former Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan said, to educate girls is to reduce poverty. Former Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf is also a firm believer in the capacity of our female population. She once remarked that to girls and women everywhere, I issue a simple invitation 
my sisters, my daughters, my friends, find your voice. Another champion of gender equality, the wife of the former United States President, Mrs. Michelle Obama, said, no country can ever truly flourish if it stifles the potential of its women and deprives itself of the contributions of half its citizens. It is for this reason that the African Development Bank is leading the way through an innovative approach that addresses systemic reasons why commercial banks and financial institutions do not lend to women. The Affirmative Finance Action for Women in Africa that we call AFAWA aims to close the gender credit gap for women entrepreneurs in Africa. To do this through AFAWA, we will put in place a $300 million guarantee facility to de risk lending by financial institutions to women businesses across the continent. And with other partners, we hope to leverage $3 billion for women entrepreneurs in Africa. AFAWA will also measure and publish an annual ratings index for commercial banks based on the quality of their lending to women and to incentivize good lending practices. The index will be used as a yardstick to channel more financial resources from the African Development Bank to financial institutions that are at the forefront of lending to women through innovative lending instruments for African women entrepreneurs. Your Excellency, you have helped to blaze the trail for millions of African women. I therefore invite and welcome you as our own Afawa advocate and champion. Today we are gathered to listen to the voice of an African elder, share her thoughts in some of our experiences working to empower women and girls in Africa. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and I have the greatest honor to invite Her Excellency, my big sister, Madame Grassa Michelle, to now deliver the Eminent Person Speaker Series, which I must say, from now on and for the very first time, will now be called the Kofi A. Annan Eminent Person Speaker Series in honor of a great African elder. Your Excellency, welcome. You have the floor. 